In the third place, we consider that Christ came to earth to give eternal life. He came to earth to give eternal life. Listen again to the words of Jesus Himself from John chapter 6 and verse 51, where Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Christ is presented in this text as a cure for sinful flesh. A cure for sinful flesh. The bodies and souls of everyone in the world are corrupted by sin. You and I inhabit physical bodies which are naturally destined to go the way of everything else in nature, to decay and judgment. In other words, our flesh, our bodies and our souls need a cure, and that cure needs to be from heaven, because everything on this earth is destined to judgment. Well, Christ in His incarnation provided that cure. He became our food. That cure, that miracle cure from heaven that we needed. His flesh is heavenly. And here He presents Himself as real food or healing food for us. One commentator has said that everything else that we eat is like a shadow compared to Jesus Christ. Now we're going to eat some good things probably in the next couple days. But it's just, they're all shadows compared to Jesus and His sustenance that He provides. Christ then gives His own flesh as a ransom for the life that we forfeited by sin. His life, His heavenly life, must go in place of ours that ours may be spared. And that's why He came to earth. Jesus teaches us here, in fact, to eat His flesh. He says, I came down from heaven as the heavenly bread so that you could eat My flesh and live. Now, of course, He's uh, using an analogy or a parable here, in a sense. He's speaking in terms that we understand, that is, of consumption of food. Now, when we eat something, when we consume something, at least ideally, and of course this doesn't always happen, but ideally we trust that what we take into our bodies will be good for us, will give us something that we need. We, in a sense, commit that food to our bodies. And that food becomes part of us. Well, Jesus is speaking here again by way of parable or concrete illustration, saying something similar happens when we eat Christ by faith. Christmas time then is not just a time to think about Jesus or to watch Him or to talk about Him, but in fact to consume Him. He came from heaven as that bread that we might consume Him. Probably all of us have uh, at one point or another walked, say we're walking down a sidewalk and you see a bakery through the, through the window, right? There's a bakery in Carbondale here and you can walk by and you can look in and you can see cookies and breads and cakes and all sorts of wonderful things. But of course, it doesn't really count until you eat it, right? Until you go into that store and take that bread and put it into your mouth and consume it. Looking doesn't just satisfy. We need to eat the food in order to satisfy. Well, how do we eat Christ and therefore fulfill, in a sense, one of the reasons why He came to earth? Well, let me give a number of ways. First of all, we commit our hearts to Him. That is, we develop an appetite for Jesus. Right? We set our hearts upon Him. 
realize that we need Him, have a desire for Him. First of all, then, commit our hearts, develop an appetite. Secondly, we consume Christ by faith by ruminating on Him. Or, you know, you sometimes you, you eat something really good. And you just want to keep that food in your mouth for a while, right? Just to get all of the flavor out of it. You don't, just, you don't just scarf it down, you keep it in your mouth. Or sort of like a wine taster, right? When a person who knows what they're doing when they drink wine and taste wine, they, you know, they go through the whole ritual. They smell it and then they put it in their mouth and sort of swish it around their mouths, right? They want to get the most out of that wine. Well, we do the same with Jesus, we reflect upon Him, His goodness, His sustenance. We meditate on who He is and not just pass by quickly in our Scripture readings or on our meditations. We ruminate on Him. Thirdly, we enjoy Him. We delight in Him. We reflect on uh, the joy that He brings to us. And the joy that we may miss out on if it wasn't for Him. So we enjoy Him. And then fourthly, we feed on Him regularly. Right, you've got a favorite food, I'm sure. And that favorite food is not something you just want to have every once in a while, right? It's something you want to have regularly. Well, on food in general, of course, is something that you need to use regularly. That's how we derive nutrients. Not just having, have, taking in some food once a week or once a month, we wouldn't have the nutrients we need. Well, uh, unfortunately, that's often how people seek to consume Christ, by taking Him in once a week, or even once a day. Who of us wants to eat just once a day? Well, we feed on Him regularly. This bread was baked perfectly. That heavenly bread came to earth perfect. But in order to be consumed, what had to happen? Well, it had to be broken. Christ breaks Himself on the cross so that we can share in His life. Christ came to give eternal life. As we reflect on this, let's join together and sing number 342. We'll stay